And we're back, guys. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. I give you the rundown on tennis coverage every single day. And before we get into the number one player on my top prospects list for the 24 season, let's talk about the 23 season. I want to say thank you guys for all the love and support. Anyone and everyone that has come here and liked the video, liked a short, dropped a positive comment, participated in some of these amazing tennis conversations i appreciate you anyone that comes here with the good energy that helps this channel thrive i appreciate it and i thank you very very much uh, moving forward i do want to discuss other things in the new year i want to focus on different sports boxing ufc maybe even basketball or football but I do want to focus more on in-studio videos where I provide you content like this, where we take a look at some of the players, you know, what they're doing on and off the court to get better. And again, I do appreciate the love and support. Stay tuned for the podcast. I hope to release that by the Australian Open, and that's going to be focusing on news stories and predictions. Um, my hope is to release it for free but then again i may charge a dollar for it because that will take work and will require commitment for me to provide that now let's get into number one on my wta 24 top prospects list there can only be one all of the ladies so far have been amazing from 10 to 2 but you know what wait a minute before we get into the number one player let's take a look at some close calls players that could have made the list but not quite first player that could have made this list but i just feel she just hasn't played enough matches i mean she only has 34 wins on her short career 17 year old american from washington dc and in case you guys are not familiar when it comes to tennis in the united states the ata is the oldest professional sports league for african americans in the united states and yes it starts essentially in Washington DC the nation's capital so we're seeing a lot of young talent from DC that are familiar with the, his, the the historic excuse me the historic relevance of tennis with African Americans in the United States uh, we had some of the best tennis leagues in the early 20th century that a lot of people don't know about and they don't give us credit for Claire V Neganyu that's right ladies and gentlemen she's she's 17 years old she plays right-handed. Her favorite shots are right two-handed, backhand. And again, she would have made this list, but she only has 34 wins on her short career. But that does include several ITF championships. And she's a two-time Junior Slam champion. Watch out for her. We saw what she did last year at the uh, San Diego Open. So she's got the skills. She has what it takes. She has a lot of power on that serve. She's a very aggressive baseliner. She's going to be the future of American tennis. I tell you that right now. And I think for sure she will be on this list next year. She won Wimbledon, the, the junior slam for girls this past year. That's right. She took out Nikola Bartonkova in straight set 6-2, 6-2. But she's not only a single junior champion. She's a doubles junior champion. Now, she's made two doubles championship appearances. Uh, we saw her lose the French Open this year with uh, partner Tyra Katarina. Now, she lost that doubles match, but she did win the Australian Open doubles championship with partner Diana Snyder. That's right. She took out Kayla Cross. We know who Kayla Cross is from Canada. And Victoria Mopo, who is also from Canada. So watch out for Claire V. Nagonyu. I think she's going to have an amazing career from the USA. Not quite ready for this list yet, but stay tuned. And another player that possibly could have made this list, but just doesn't have enough wins. 19-year-old Angela Okutoyi. She's from Kenya, ladies and gentlemen, and we just saw her win an amazing tournament. That's right, in her hometown, taking out some very tough veteran competition. She would have made this list, but she doesn't have enough matches played. And you saw that last week when she won the Kenya ITF tournament. But she hasn't played enough matches and people may ask why. Well, tennis is a very expensive sport. And sometimes as a junior, you have to really be cautious of the tournaments you enter. 
because you know tennis requires there's travel fees you know there's including flights um, ground transportation hotel uh, coaches medical food uh, t you know tournament fees there's a lot that you know equipment fees there's a lot of costs and expenses that go into playing a full packed schedule and a lot of these juniors that don't play as much they're pretty cautious of the tournaments they enter they want to enter tournaments that they know they can win that can help benefit them and when you have a sponsor or endorsements it makes that process a little easier personally i think any junior slam winner should have a sponsor you know i'm not familiar if uh, Angela has a sponsor or not but just playing so few matches you know I would think possibly she's more cautious in the event discussing that and speaking on that in her Washington DC post-match victory speech that she gave she kind of talked about some of the politics and things that go on behind the scenes tennis is a very expensive sport but watch out for Angela Okutoyi I think she has the skills to really be a top solid player talented so watch out for her ladies and gentlemen now I want to talk about a couple ladies that are not on this top prospects list and they're also teenagers. And I know it's there's going to be questions like, well, how come Linda Favert was not on the list? She's not on the list because this list is for prospects, players that I think will win a WTA championship or make another deep run in the year 24. And Linda's not on this list because she already has a championship. Okay, I don't think Linda is a prospect. I think she is a contender. I mean, we saw what she did last year at the age of 17 in India. She took out some very, very tough competition. I mean, she took out in the championship match, she took out Magda Lynette. That was an amazing tournament where, look, Magda was up a break and a set. And Linda came back. She showed amazing mental maturity. She has ice veins, ladies and gentlemen. She beat Rebecca Peterson in that draw, Vavara, Podoroska. We've also seen her beat Wong, another junior slam champion. We've seen her beat a junior slam number one slash champion and Marketa Von Joseva, a grand slam winner. We saw her push Donna Vekic to the limits. So Lynn is not on this list, even though she's 18, because I feel she is a she's a contender and she already has a championship. I, I honestly feel that Linda will win a Grand Slam one day, but that's why Linda's not on this list. She's not a prospect. She has arrived already. She has a championship. She's coached by some of the best coaches in the world, and she's very solid. Even though last year wasn't a great year for her, she had a losing season, but I've said this in the past. Juniors that come up to the main tour, it's going to take an adjustment period where they have to adjust to the power of these adult women. And for Linda to win a title at 17 is amazing. That's why she's not on the list. She already has a title. And another player that's not on this list. Now, she does not have a main tour championship, but I feel she's not a prospect. I think Linda Noskova is a contender, ladies and gentlemen. She's a former junior number one. She's a junior slam winner. But what she did this, or should I say last year now, right? What she did last year at the Adelaide International, coming through qualifiers, she literally took out, she, you, might have, you might as well have called her the Russian assassin. She took out that entire Russian lineup. Unbelievable. She took out Anna Kailinskaya in the first round of qualifiers. Anastasia Patapova in straight sets. Dasha Kina. She took out Claire Lou and made her look amateurish. She took out Victoria Azarenka, by the way, who's not from Russia. She's from Belarus. How many times does she have to say that? She beat Anz Jabor, and she went to a tiebreak in the championship match with Arena Sabalenka. I feel that Linda Noskova would, out of doubt, be number one on this list. But I don't think she is a content. I don't think she's a prospect. I think she's a contender. And I mean, furthermore, look, I said early on in Linda's career without knowing, I said, look, Linda plays just like Petra Kvitova. It's amazing how she angles that forehand very low to the ground, making it difficult for her opponents to return. And sure enough, she's coached by Petra's old coach, David Kostya, who helped Petra win her two Grand Slam titles at Wimbledon. So without even knowing that, just watching her play and seeing the similarities between her game and Petra's game, 
it's like it was beautiful to find that out and I think Linda's a contender so that's why she's not on this list I mean she has literally made a lot of the top women sweat and uh, without a doubt I, I do think Linda will win a title this year but I think she's a contender already so that's why Linda's not on this list and without further ado the number one prospect for the 24 season is Mira Andreva. That's right, guys. Five foot seven, 16 years old. She is the future of Russian tennis without a doubt. Mira's 16 years old from Russia. She's a right handed player. Her favorite shots are two handed backhand. And she took the tennis world by storm this past season. She has an 81% win percentage and has six career ITF singles championships. Mira's three set loss in the Australian Open girls title match last year to Alina Korneva reminded me of the loss that Floyd Mayweather faced as a Olympic amateur. That's right guys. The difference is Mayweather was robbed a gold medal due to politics. But Mayweather said in his post match interview with tears, it's time for me to turn pro. And Mira and Dreva did just that, ladies and gentlemen. Seeing Mira cry on the big stage after a three set grueling match was tough to watch. Mira won the first set in a tie break 7 6, winning 7 2 in the tie break. But she would lose the second set 6 4, 7 5 to Alina and break down in tears on national television. But she would get it together, gather herself, and take her frustration out on the main tour. And Boy, did she come out like a firecracker. Mira would go on to win a couple championships in Switzerland on the ITF circuit, taking out big names like Fiona Farrell, Celine Neef, Nadia Paderowska. But the big match came in a showdown in Madrid, the first round against Leila Fernandez, former top ranked 13 in the world player and Mira would take her out in straight sets 6 3 6 4. That would lead to a showdown with left handed powerhouse from the baseline, Beatrice Haddad, the current world ranked number 10 at the time. And Mira would also take Beatrice out in straight sets. The first set went to a tie break. Beatrice was up a break and had a chance to close it out, but could not. Mira was just too strong and too fast. That would lead to a third round matchup with Magda Lynette, the current ranked 19th player on tour. And Mira Andreva would take her out in three sets, 6-3, six, 6-3. Three, six, three. And Mira would defeat three players in a row, current or former top 20 players. And she had the tennis world going in a frenzy. Mira would lose in the round of 16 to Arena Sabalenka, but this would set up a showdown at the French Open with Corey Coco Goff. Mira would come through qualifiers taking out Paulina Kunimatova, Emiliana Arango, a very good clay player, former junior number one slam champion Camilla Osorio, Allison Riss in the first round after she made it to the big draw, and Diane Perry, another amazing clay player. She beat 6-1, 6-2. This would set up a showdown in the third round with Corey Coco Goff. Mira said in the pre-match interview that Coco's very nice to her. She had a chance to practice with Coco and Coco was just so fast for her. She said she was amazed at the speed that Coco possessed. But Mira would come out and play amazing. Mira would win the first set off of Coco in a tie break 7-5. But Coco would regroup, gather her thoughts and win the match 6-1, 6-1 in the second and third sets but Mira was not done yet. Due to the age limit and her schedule restrictions, her schedule's pretty light, but she would take her talents to Wimbledon, the historic. And there we watched Mira get the job done again. Coming through qualifiers, taking out Vickens Moss in straight set 6-3-6-1. Chloe Paquette, the veteran, 6-1-6-2. Tamara Korpatch in three sets. Wong in the first round, former junior slam champion. Barbora Kachikova, 6-3. And Barbora would have to retire because Mira's power was just too much. And Anastasia Patapova gone wild was no match for Mira. 6-2-7-5 in straight sets. And Maddie, Patty, Madison Keys would need three sets to get the job done. But Mira 
made it to the round of 16. Very impressive for a 16 year old. Mir is the only player on this list to come in qualifiers and make two Grand Slam championship appearances and make it to at least the third round. Unbelievable. Later on this year, Mira also had success on the main tour where we saw her take out Dayana Yastrzemka in Switzerland and Tamir Korpatch in Cleveland before losing in straight sets to Sloane Stephens. In Beijing, Mira qualified again taking out Kimberly Burrell, Anna Kailinskaya, and once qualified, she would take out Barbora Kachigova again in straight sets, 6-2, 6-2 in the first round, and she would then take out fellow veteran countrywoman Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova in straight set 6-2-6-1. Mira would lose in the third round of the Beijing WTA 500 event to Elena Rabakina in three sets though after winning the first set off of Elena Rabakina. Very impressive. She would also win another match in the Hong Kong WTA 250 where she would take out Diana Yastrzemska in the first round before losing to Leila Fernandez in three sets. Mira's popularity has taken her to new heights, becoming the only player to start this season ranked over 400 to make it inside the top 50. Very impressive. And she's so popular, she was even requested to attend the World Tennis League by the Saudi Princes, where she did not disappoint, entertaining and electrifying fans with her razzle-dazzle and amazing play from the baseline. And why is Mira number one on my top prospects list? because she's arguably the best 16 year old I've ever seen play. She has the power to back off adult grown women and her maturity level and decision making is that of a tenured veteran 30 years or older. Mira is simply the real deal. And that's why she's number one on my list of top prospects to watch for the 24 season. I'm your host Good Energy, thanks for listening. Be sure to check out the playlist of all ladies from 10 to number one. And stay tuned for my top 10 list of American tennis players that I think will have the best season in 24. Happy New Year to everyone, and thanks again for all the love and support.